Hi everybody, so today we're going to talk about examples for those derivative rules that we learned. So again, if the stuff before, you know, it's not really making sense, it doesn't really have to make sense. Hopefully you kind of get what a derivative is, but the rules are really just rules. And so we use them and you'll start to memorize them once you, if you do a lot of these things. Let me get to, let me get used to it a little bit. So we learned the constant rule and that just said, that if you had a function f of x times c, where c is some, some number, so then the derivative, so d by dx of c, c f of x, well, that's just simply, you can take c out and then take the derivative of f with respect to x. If we have the, the product rule, okay, product rule just said that before, if you have two functions, f of x and g of x, then the derivative with respect to x, d by dx of f of x times g of x. Well, that is equal to f prime of x g of x plus g prime of x f of x. Okay. We also had the the power rule, which said if you have a function that looks like x to the n, so the d by dx of x to the n is simply n x to the n minus 1. And finally, we have the chain rule. So chain rule, it says that the derivative, if you have a function h of x, so we'll say h of x is equal to f of g of x, which means we put, we have whatever f is, whatever g is, we put g into f. And we'll talk about that. It's kind of confusing, but I'll, I'll show you what I mean. And so the derivative or, or h prime of x, I'll just, yeah, I'll just write it as that. So h prime of x, the derivative of h with respect to x is equal to f prime at g of x times g prime of x. So let's get an example for each of these and build up to more and more complicated functions. I'm never going to do anything super crazy because it's not really necessary. Uh, most people going to university have taken some pretty nasty derivatives and you get used to it. Um, but for the simple ones, basically, we'll start with the power rule because I'll show you, you're pretty much using it every single time without maybe even knowing it, is say that we had the derivative of uh, just x to the 3. Okay, well, that you're going to push that to the front and you're going to get 3x, except you drop 1 on the exponent of x and you get 3x squared. Okay, now let me show you the derivative of x with this rule. Okay, so d by d x dx by dx is equal to, I'm just writing this slightly differently, it's the exact same thing, dx to the 1 by dx, which now it looks like it's in the form before, where actually just to make it really, really look like it's in the form before, we could write this exactly the same way as 1 times x to the 1. And so following the same rule, you get 1 times 1, this goes down and multiplies, it's 1 times 1 is 1, I'm not even going to write it, that's x, and then you drop the exponent by 1, that's x to the 0, x to the 0 is just equal to 1 itself. So the derivative of x is just 1, okay, with respect to x. Okay, so that's the power rule right there. Now we're going to use the constant rule a little bit. So the constant rule is a very simple one, it's just saying d by dx of say 3x squared, well, we know how to take the derivative of x squared, and so that's equal to, uh, well, the, the using the constant rule, it's 3 times d by dx of x squared, which is simply equal to 3 times 2x, which is equal to 6x, okay? And that's really all the constant rule is ever going to do. Okay, sorry about the jump there. So let me just show you one for the product rule now. So maybe we had uh, f of x, maybe we let f of x equal 3x squared, and we let g of x equal 7x. Well, we find that with the, the, the derivative in question is simply the d by dx of 3x squared times 7x. So that's 3x squared times 7x. Well, quite simply, we could ignore the product rule altogether, and we could just calculate this by simplifying as d by dx 
of multiply the numbers together, we get 21. Multiply the exponents or the x's together, we get x squared times x is x to the 3 now. And so now you can just do this derivative as 3 times 21 is 63 x squared. And then you're done, right? Well, if you were to do it the, the product rule way, you would instead, and let me just split it here, this is the product rule way, is equal to, so instead we would have uh, f prime of x, so let me to calculate, so we, uh, we have f prime of x is equal to uh, 6x, right? And then g prime of x, g prime of x is simply equal to 7 using your, our other rules. So that, this same, uh, the same thing of interest here, that is equal to, no, I don't need to write that again. It's quite simply f prime of x, so that's 6x times g of x, which is 7x. So it's this, plus, and then we add g prime of x, which is 7. We multiply that by f of x, which is x, 3x squared. And now we get, this is 42x squared plus 21x squared, which then simplifies to 63x squared. And so that proves that, yeah, this is how you do the product rule for that. There are some other examples when you can't, you can't do it like this, you would actually really need to use the product rule. Okay, so that's one such example for the product rule. Let's talk about the chain rule. So h of x, if it's equal to f of g of x, meaning we have this function g of x and we put that into the input for f. So then h prime of x actually is equal to f prime of g of x times g prime of x. Let me show you with an example. So basically if we had, uh, let me stick with the same color. So if we had f of x is equal to 3x squared, sorry about that squared, that doesn't look very good, 3x squared, and g of x is equal to, say, 4x. Well, that means that h of x must be equal to, we, we take, um, we do f of 4x, okay? And so that means we put 4x into that input, it goes into here, and so we get 3 times that input, 4x, all squared, which, again, if we were just to ignore the rule, we, we can we can simplify this right away. We have 3 times 16x squared, which is 48x squared. And very simply, without even using the rule, we could calculate that h prime of x is equal to, you take the 2 down, you get 96 x. Okay, so that's the derivative that we want to make sure we get. But there's times when you need, a lot of times, when you need to use this rule. Okay, so the rule, which uh, I'll start basically, okay, here, okay. So here's when we simplified it. I'm not going to simplify it. So right here, we have h of x is equal to this thing. Well, we're saying that h prime of x is f prime of g of x and g prime of x. Clearly, we need f, f prime. So f prime of x itself is equal to 6, 6x. Okay, uh, g prime, g prime of x is equal to just four. And so h prime, h prime of x must be equal to f prime. So that's, we'll just write it as this for now, f prime of g of x, which is 4x. And then we're going to multiply this thing by g prime of x, which is just four. So that's equal to f prime. Uh, and the f prime is 6x, so this is actually 6 times 4x times 4, which is equal to 24x times 4, which is the same thing, it's 96x. Okay, so that was an example for the chain rule, um, and that was an example for everything, really. Okay, so we're done with these kind of rules. We're going to show uh, very shortly, not quite yet, but very shortly, how we can actually solve for beta naught and beta 1 earlier using these techniques.